A friend of ours bought an 840 knitting machine in pieces, and she's so smart she has it all together except for one single part. So this is to help her and anyone else in that situation. This is a picture of an 840 Singer plate. We don't have an 840 to demonstrate on, but you will soon see how very close all the models were for quite a while. The specific part we're looking to help with is the weaving lever spring, but you'll see Jack take the whole thing apart and put it together. All right, this is the item in question, the spring for the weaving lever. This is a parts catalog for a 965. It is the exact same part number. The item number is different. This is 183, but the part number is exactly the same as our friend's 840. This is a sinker plate from an 892. That is the weaving brush, and you can hear the spring engaging and disengaging which is right in there, and this is what she's having trouble putting together. This is a 930. It's got the exact same assemblage. So we're going to do one of these and show you how that spring goes in there, because as best we can discern, all of these brother sinker plates that have this weaving brush has the same part number for that spring. This is true for many years. If you go back before 840, it is no longer true. The 800s were significantly different. Yes. This is the order in which I did this. I took the weaving brush off to get it out of the way. Then I took this wing off to give me access to this weaving brush assembly I would suggest that for most people, you take those two screws and this screw out and remove this guide section here also. And it's this screw, this screw, and this screw on the front. These are the weaving guides and that's one of the features that does change quite a bit from model to model. This is what they look like on the 840. And here are the screws that connect them. Now, here is the spring in position. Now, if you'll notice, when I move the lever, it doesn't lock in either direction because the spring, when you pull these screws through the front of the sinker plate into that threaded boss right there, it's going to pull this plate up close to the front of the sinker plate, like this one is now. And once it's pulled up tight, that's when this spring is pressed into service. And so that's where you get the sound of click, click for the two positions. But that is the spring in its position. Now I'm going to take it out and show you this will fall out just like that. But notice the spring has a little teeny tang right there. And that tang rides in that cutout. There's a cutout right there. So, spring goes in this way. And that cutout has to be lined up with that tang on the spring. So that when it's compacted by tightening the screws here and here. I'll turn it up so you can see. That spot and that spot. Are, is, is where these two threaded bosses line up when the screws go through. The trick is you have to put this back in in that position, and if you're not careful, that spring will fall right out. This is how the 930 weaving guides come off, and Jack wants you to realize they are under pressure. They have to be compressed a little bit to get back in when it comes time to reassemble. The other thing I've done is I've loosened the brushes and this guide plate so that they flop around a little bit. That's going to give me a little more maneuverability. What I'm going to try to do is put it in holding it in this direction so that that spring keeps itself in. So when we go in from the underside, 
you first have to line up the spring, I mean the brush edge. Then you have to get the, and the brush goes inside here. And we're going to get to a point where, there you go. Sometimes it'll flop forward, and in order to line it up, you've got to reach around and move it manually. See what I'm doing mm -hmm. with the plate? Now, I'm looking down in there, and I want to move it till my nut plates are lined up like so. Now, I'm actually holding this in my right hand, and... Once I get my left hand where I can steady the sinker plate, I can still see down in there. I line up my screw. If you're good with your fingers, you can actually start it. I like to get my itty bitty cross point, hold it up, and feel it very gently catch the threads. And all the while, I'm looking down in here to see that my spring is still in place. I lost my alignment in my yakking, but there it is back again. This is where one customer said an octopus trained to do this would be very beneficial. And there it goes. Jack likes to use a small screwdriver first and then get everything completely tight with a larger one. All right, let's see. Yes, that's Sounds exactly right. what you want. Now, I will tell you, work with this screw first. You're going to, I was trying to do it so that the camera can see, but you really want to slant it this way. So you're looking right down into the hole and the, the, the boss underneath it. And what I was doing is, if you'll notice where my fingers are, the little finger is pressing against the ring finger. And I've got this cupped between my index finger and my next finger. And the thumb is in here. And you really have to keep this from tilting away from you. The end of the brush goes right into this cutout area. And you can see the brush, the end of the brush goes behind this plate. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right. The brushes are still loose. And I had the bristles behind that plate so all i did was reach my screwdriver in and lift the brushes the bristles out from behind the plate so if that happens to you you don't have to take it back out you just have to reach in and flip those bristles over but that was what i found it's easier with the brush loose now once you get these tightened up and the spring is locked into position then you can flip it over and you see my little teeny cross point gets in there and you can tighten this screw and can the camera see? I was it? seeing it before you moved. Oh, okay. And that screw. And now we have the brushes and that guide tightened back up. This is what I was telling you about putting this spring guide back on. You want to start this screw where you can hold the boss lined up, and I'll take it out just to show you. This is just a hole. That's all that is. The threads are in here. This is the threaded boss. So you want to get it in. I'm going to turn it so I can see. And you'll have to put that, hole, that boss into position under the hole. Start your screw in, and you can see the screw is angled, so I know that my boss has slipped a little bit. Keep wiggling it with this finger until you can get it to line up. You can see the screw moving slightly. You may want to drop it down a hair, whatever works for you, to get that thread started on that one, just enough to get the other two in. Second one, I'm doing the same thing. I'm holding it from underneath in a position where I can see the boss through the hole. And you just want to get a couple of turns on the screw so you know it's in there. And then we go to the third one. And again, you have to line it up and put a little bit of pressure on it. 
I'm actually pushing with my thumb on the sinker plate and pulling out with my finger on that guide. And then with your other, other hand, start the screw. Be careful because doing this, since the threads are in here, look how thin that piece of metal is. You cannot afford to cross thread this. It'll be ruined. Yeah, yeah. The threads will be gone. And there's repair methods for that, but the best thing to do is to just use your littlest screwdriver. Be very careful that when you start it, there's no pressure against turning the screw. That'll let you know it might not be lined up. So it's all a matter of alignment. After you've done it about 10,000 times, it actually becomes easy. All right, this is also <clears throat> a spring that must be properly aligned. That's to move this rubber wheel in and out. And when this is off, you can lose that alignment of this end of the spring. So be careful that when you get it off, you make sure that this is in position before you there. And you'll notice there's a tip right here that is over a hole when it's locked into position. So lock it into one position. Make sure it stays. And you can see the footprint of the wing mount for this. So we put it on. Three screws start in the middle. This is a useful thing to know because sometimes these wings get bent new ones are actually still available and you may find yourself sometime in a position to need to change out these pieces and right. we call them wings because that's what they look like to us that's not the correct name no there is an actual name for them the name they have in the parts catalogs is actually sinker plate right and sinker plate left two screws in and look at how much wow a lot of movement still a lot of movement all right, I've got all three started, and this is something else that happens. It's amazing, but these sinker plates get dropped upon occasion. And look at how much movement we have inside of there. So what's important is this critical distance here, the fact that, you see how it tilted just now? The fact that these two have a common surface right there. And that has to be kept, but these three planes, this one, this one, and this one, become bent, sometimes in shipping. So we aren't making a video about straightening these because, as Catherine said, components are still available, and it's very, very tricky. You'll break them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel the alignment underneath here. I'm going to start with this one and snug it up. Check my distance here. Now I can feel this one and line it up. See how I moved it just a little? Tighten it up. So you notice I did not tighten them up. I was still working with my itty bitty. And it's tightened. That's as tight as this can get them. But now I have enough movement that, yeah, I'm happy with that. So now you're going to use a larger a lar screwdriver much larger. with greater torque and really solidify it. If right? you'll notice, if the camera can move slightly, I've got these three screwdrivers I'm using and a fourth one of the same size as this one, but I like that long shank when I'm trying to get some torque. So now again, hold everything stationary. Start on the outside, go to the middle, go to the inside. Now look and see do these two tips line up well? Do these two surfaces line up well? Because the position of these wings is what puts your brushes and your rollers in position to help guide your yarn into the needles. Putting the brush back in, a little trick that I've learned is put the boss down, put the brush in, flip the boss up, and it'll help hold the brush in position. And you notice, oop, no crud need apply. You I know that I noticed this one needs yeah. a deep cleaning. That's a hipped screw. 
So the hip goes down into the brush, again with the little guy started in there, and the screw goes as tight as you can get it, but it will not prevent the brush from spinning. Yeah, that's its old job. You need to put enough pressure down on this and see what it's trying to do is flip itself into the lowered position. So I got my thumb back here to let it go down a little, but just enough I can get the torque needed to set that screw in place. And we still have rotation and we still have our spring.